Here are our recommendations for the in-class meeting dealing with consonants. The title of the respective e-lecture is Basic Segments of Speech, Consonants. As usual, you should start with the definition of your central goals. Well, here they are. First, you should look at phonetics and phonology once more for a very short time. And then you should collaborate with the students, defining place of articulation, manner of articulation, then bring it all together in defining all types of consonantal features and then you should go into ear training with them and last but not least you should look at those consonants that are relevant for present-day English. Before you start with the phase of practicing about 25 percent of the in-class time should be reserved for questions that the students might want to ask about the virtual session, the e-lecture or the workbook content. So you should reserve one screen where you should write down these questions. For example, one question that often occurs is what is the difference between glottalic and glottal? So this is just one question. Now these questions should be collected for future classes and for optional revisions of the online content. Once this part has been finished, the phase of practicing can start. The first task is to define the various places of articulation and to associate one consonant with each place. This is what one could do. One could define several containers, so let's take just three of them as an example, and label them with certain places of articulation. And of course, this labeling can be done by close interaction with the students. So they would come up with bilabial, would define it, they would come up with alveola, and of course define it, and for example with vela, to name just three places of articulation. Then you should, as a class instructor, define let's say some consonants so let's do that and for example ask the students what place of articulation is involved and they would of course identify this as a bilabial consonant and you can then put it into the container and then draw the next one let's say this one and again the students would by means of interaction with you define the container and define this one as a vela consonant and so on and so forth. The second task is just like the first. Again you define some containers which are labeled with the respective manners of articulation. Well let's do it once more. For example plosive or nasal to name just two of them. Well and again as a class instructor you define some consonants and ask the students to associate them with the manner of articulation. In this case of course you all know that this is a nasal consonant and by doing this you can define once more the typical properties of nasal, fricative, plosive, approximant and all the other manners of articulation. The next exercise brings it all together. Already you had, we, we had defined place and manner. Now you will ask the students to name the third criterion. Well as you know this is of course voicing and here is the correct sequence of labeling consonants henceforth so now you can again define some consonants and ask the students to define this consonant and many others in terms of voicing place and manner of articulation now the next phase of the in-class practical deals with ear training now to train the students auditory capability five to ten consonants in a vocalic environment with a sufficient amount of repetitions in each case should now be produced by the instructor.
The students have to transcribe the consonants and eventually the instructor gives the solution on the board. So this is what is happening. You will produce something like Anga. Now the students are writing down the solution. You repeat it several times. Anga. Then you go on. Number two. Asha. And again. Asha. Once you're ready, you take this environment here and write down the solution. Anga in the first case and Asha in the second. And now your students can compare their solution with the model solution and check how well they performed. The next step is another exercise of this type. However, the pattern is a little bit more complex. Now, a pattern of the type, well, let's take an example, Aratha, Aratha can be used. So this would be my solution again. Aratha. And if you produce five or ten of these patterns, the students have a nice opportunity of checking their own capability of consonantal identification. Believe it or not, students like this sort of exercise, especially if they're motivated in advance to achieve a good score. The final task of this in-class meeting exposes the students to the language in focus. In many cases this is present-day English and we now let the students discuss and find out the consonants that are used in present-day English. A good method to do that is the active plenary meeting in which two students come to the front, one to write on the board, another one to collect the information from the audience. And the task of the audience is to name the consonants that have to be filled in the chart. The instructor will disappear in the back of the room and sit behind the students so that he or she doesn't interfere with the students. And now the students start uh, filling this chart. For example, one student might call out, well, English has a voiceless labiodental fricative. And another one would say, English has a voiced velar plosive and so on and so forth. Now when the students are ready, the class instructor who sits in the back during the active plenary meeting comes back, optionally corrects and discusses the data collection by the audience and last but not least points out the differences between British and American English and as you know the difference is of course that in British English we have an alveolar approximant and in American English we have a retroflex approximant realization of the orthographic R. The time required for these exercises in a task is totally up to you. According to my experience, you should clarify terminology, for example, the difference between glottal and glottalic, the fact that retroflex is no true place of articulation, but rather a label for a specific tongue configuration, and last but not least, enrich the in-class with anecdotes about languages and their sound systems. The VLC language index can be of enormous help here. Well. And if you want more exercises, just use the questions on the VLC practical sheet associated with this unit.